Hello and welcome once again to another Red Gaming Tech video, myself, Marta. Hope you're all having a wonderful bank holiday or Easter weekend. I have just been enjoying the absolutely glorious weather we've been having here in my part of the UK lately. We don't get weather like this very often, so it's just been nice to enjoy the sunshine a little bit. But I'm not here to talk about the sun. No, no, no. I'm here to talk about technology news from the last 24 or so hours. I'm going to kick things off regarding Ryzen 3000. So, what do we have? Well, we have a leak which has appeared on the Chip Hell forums, which is a name that should very much be familiar to you. So, what has leaked on there on this particular occasion is a Ryzen 3000 APU. So this is part of the Picasso lineup which includes both desktop and mobile APUs. Now just to be clear before I go any further, this is Ryzen 3000 but it is using 12nm Zen Plus not Zen 2 and the APU that we have seen on Chip Hell here is the Ryzen 3 3200G again part of the desktop Picasso lineup. So Obviously this is going to be a direct follow up to the 2200G and we actually have a picture of it. And unfortunately that was all that was on the Chip Hell forums, however Tom Appisank did actually give some information regarding the chip. And he basically said that there's no benchmark yet for it, but it is a four core, four thread part. You may recall there were some earlier benchmarks that put the base clock around 3.6 gigahertz and a base of 3.9. And we also heard previous rumblings of four cores, four threads. So it seems Tom Apisak's information confirms that, that these specs haven't really changed all that much, much, excuse me, since then. But that's not the only AMD piece of news I have for you today. We have a Geekbench benchmark which has been spotted showing a Ryzen 5 3500U. Now interestingly the actual benchmark is for Huawei KPR WX9. But if you look a bit down the benchmark, which of course is going to be linked below in the description, you'll see that we have a Ryzen 5 3500U excuse me, with Radeon Vega mobile graphics. And we also see 4 cores, 8 threads, as well as a base frequency of 2.10 GHz and a max of 3.6. And of course a code name which should be very familiar to you, that of Raven Ridge. Now obviously it's not just the... 3500U which have been tested here, but it's still of course worth mentioning the single core and multi-core score that it got. It got a single core score of 3703, so 3703, and a multi-core score of 10563 or 105563. Of course there is a bunch more information, but again it is going to be linked below for your perusal if you wish to give the full benchmark results and breakdown of the single core and multi-core performance is going to be there for you. But I have left the best thing till last as we have some pretty promising news regarding the yields of Zen 2. Now of course as we know Zen 2 has a multi-chip design and we are seeing of course a move to the 7nm architecture moving on from the 14nm and of course 12nm of Zen Plus. Now according to a report from Bits and Chips to IT Zen 2 dies are having a pretty nice yield rate of about 70%, which is pretty damn nice, especially when you consider this is a new processor excuse me, on a leading edge process node. Now it is worth mentioning of course that 14nm Zen did have higher yields, but we are way way earlier in the 7nm life cycle than we were for 14nm and we can fully expect the yields for 7nm process to improve as we move forward. But to start off from 70%, I would argue is pretty damn impressive. Now this is great news for costs because, well, just to kind of give you some context for this, for example, for the 28 core CPU, there's a yield rate of about 35%, which obviously would explain, partially at least, why the high core count processors are as expensive as they are. Because obviously, if you're getting such a low percentage of yield, you don't need me to explain it, it makes sense why that would be the case. So, the reverse would be true here. Now obviously AMD are still going to price competitively and all of that sort of stuff, thinking about profits there or business at the end of the day, but the fact that they're getting such a high yield rate of 70% means that they don't have to rack, crack up the cost because they're having poor yields. So 
Good news for us as consumers, essentially, and definitely a promising start for this new architecture. Again, I would expect that to improve as we move further into the life cycle of not only Zen 2, but of course the 7nm process itself. Anywho, we're going to finish up our proceedings today as we have some stuff for Intel's Ice Lake. Now, this is really only interesting if you're into your Linux, or at least interested in what is going on in the world of Linux, but we have more Ice Lake graphics fixes on the way with the Linux 5.2 kernel. Now, of course, we have already seen Elk Heart Lake excuse me, support, and of course, we have already seen previous Gen 11 slash Ice Lake support being added in the kernel for Linux, but we're basically just seeing some tweaks. They have reworked driver code to basically correctly handle the Ice Lake graphics frequencies, and also they've improved things for Elkhart Lake as well. And basically we're just seeing a lot of improvements and fixes for the Gen 11 graphics hardware, which is always nice to see, especially considering that Gen 11 hasn't even hit the market yet. Now, if you do wish to see the full list of changes, there is, of course, going to be a link in the description below this video. As you might expect, the list is longer than my arm, so I'm not going to go through it here. But if you want to have some relaxing evening reading, then it is going to be in the description below for you. So there we have it, my friends. A bit of a shorter one today, I'm sure you'll agree, but uh, thank you very much for watching, as always. Apologies for the delay on the Patreon post, by the way. I was just horribly ill last weekend, so I just get, get, didn't get around to doing it. So I will be doing it in the lovely long weekend. I'll be doing a bunch of stuff that I've, I've not got around to doing, to be honest. So thanks so much for watching, and thanks for your patience on that. And as always, the support is highly appreciated. Go out and enjoy the weather, my friends. Hopefully it will stay this nice until Tuesday, touch wood. Anywho, that's me done. Bye-bye.